Let's start from the beginning. What was your reaction on that call? Uh, at first, I thought I was getting punked because I, I wasn't expecting to receive a call at 9.15 p.m. telling me that I got a job. So when the call first came through, I thought it was just to review a few things or just to check in. And it ended up being saying, welcome to the National Football League. And so my immediate response was, am I being punked? No, you're not being punked. Are you serious? Yeah, this is the real deal. And then I just, I was ecstatic. Like I just jumped up and down. I screamed. I couldn't believe it. Now that it's been a week, has it set in at all? How are you feeling right now today as the news breaks? I think the reactions are, is what is actually getting to me to let me know that this is a real thing. Um, you know, just sitting inside of my home, you know, I haven't gone out. So I, I don't know what the general public's like, but just seeing like my students, the way that they're reacting, the messages I'm getting from them, um, what's going on on social media. I'm like, OK, this is real. And I just I just really um, I really appreciate like all the kind words that are being said. Um, a lot of folks that said that, you know, how I impact their lives are now coming out. And that's that's what this that's what this is all about. That's what this means to me, um, you know, seeing how I'm able to impact others lives. We're going to come back to that because I feel like that's a huge piece of being a woman, being a black woman today and having such a historic moment happen to you. But I want you to take me back to the beginning. Tell me a little bit about the day that you fell in love with officiating and you fell in love with the game of football. Uh, I fell in love with the game of football maybe when I was a kid somewhere. I just like to run outside and I love to like tackle the boys and hit the boys and, you know, run faster than them. That was it was just always in my blood. I had that aggression. And, um, you know, as I got older, I couldn't play it, you know, because there isn't really tack. There wasn't tackle football leagues like in the 90s, like for women or for girls in high school. It just wasn't an option. Um, so as I got older and while I was at Norfolk State University, one of my jobs were, you know, I worked with student activities and we did intramural sports. And part of my duties there were lining the football field, you know, scheduling football officials. And I just thought, hey, this is actually a pretty cool way to stay in touch with the sport. I'm already teaching PE. I know I want a PE degree. Um, what else can I do with my downtime? You know, you get off of work from teaching at like two something. Uh, I didn't want to be a coach. And so I said, I'm gonna give officiating a try. And so it just happened. You've had a lot of steps in your career from high school games to college games to the XFL to now the NFL's officiating program. What has that whole process been like to you and being in this room where you look like none of the other people who are doing what you're doing? Um, it's been a lot of hard work. And because I, I don't look like, well, I didn't look like anybody else, um, especially at the time coming up, I didn't, I didn't think I felt that I, I had the need to address that. I never had to state the fact that I'm a woman. I never had to state the fact that you know I'm a woman of color. Um, all I wanted to do was just be respected as an official. And so, my focus was really just to drive and uh, put all my focus into my work, studying the rule book, studying my mechanics, um, just knowing what to do, learning how to interact with other people who didn't look like me um, was a big thing, uh, especially when I jumped into the college football ranks. I start working with a bunch of guys that all they listen to is country music. You know, I don't know the first thing about country music, but I had to learn it. You know, uh, I had to learn it so I can get to learn, know those guys and so I can gain their respect. And in turn, they started to learn different aspects about me. And so that's actually the beautiful thing about officiating. It brings people together from all kinds of backgrounds. Um, just for one common goal is like to work an outstanding football game. And what has that game had on your life? What kind of impact has it had? Um, it has made me a more, more versatile person, uh, being exposed to so many different people, um, especially men. Uh, I get to see the way that men make decisions. And a lot of times that has caused me to make decisions, um, be more decisive in my decision making, should I say. Uh, so I'm already an alpha woman by nature, but I think this just ramped it up even more. Um, and it's just giving me more confidence. Um, and you have to have confidence in order to work on this level. There's no secret that women face barriers in sports, especially in the National Football League. What does this mean to you as a woman, as a black woman? Just what do you think this means for the future? Well, I hope, hopefully I'm not the last one hired and that there'll be more coming uh, soon, you know? Um, and so I, I'm really hoping for that. And there's anything that I can do to speed up the process or help anybody out along the way, you know, I don't mind doing that, you know, reaching out and helping out and making sure that, you know, it doesn't just stop with me. 
you know, or it doesn't just stop with, you know, the next person after that. It's something that has to continue to go, to grow. What would you say to the little girls in Rochester who are you watching you now, or the girls on social media who are seeing what you're doing, or your students? What would you say to these young people who see what you're doing, and how would you encourage them to follow your path? I would tell them to make sure that if they have a passion for something and they don't mind working hard for it, you need to go ahead and go for it, as long as it doesn't compromise your morals or your values. So you want to make sure that you're making strong, smart decisions, um, and the decisions that you make should get you respected. You want to always work to be respected. Don't try to make decisions just to be accepted, because you know, everybody wants to be liked, especially on social media. They want the attention. They want the followers. So you just have to make decisions that's going to get you the respect. Once you have that, all the good attention will follow. And I guess my last question is, how do you carry Rochester with you in your day-to-day -day life, whether it's on the field or off? Man, shoot, I, I love boss sauce. <laughs> so if I, if I can get to know it, seriously, um, just for me with Rochester in general, just growing up in the area I grew up in, I think that's another reason why um, I'm tough, you know, have a little tough exterior. You know, I grew up uh, pretty much along Frost Avenue um, and, and, and did some stints in the 19th Ward. Um, I also spent a lot of time in the Boys and Girls Club growing up. And so that also gave me a lot of confidence to step out and to try anything that I, you know, and to not be afraid to fail. Maya, thank you so much for taking a couple minutes to sit down and, and talk to me. It's an honor to meet you and to interview you and you inspire me and so many other people.